Hello, welcome to Taming Toxic Plants with the University of Wyoming Extension. My name is Derek Scasta. This is a program to provide advice to ranchers and range managers. Today, I'm going to be talking about pine needle abortion. So when it comes to pine needle abortion, the main tree species we're concerned with is ponderosa pine because ponderosa pine um, environments are really suitable for grazing of livestock. You can see in this distribution map here that ponderosa pine is present across the western United States, um, including western South Dakota and northwestern Nebraska, and even down into the southwestern states of Arizona and New Mexico. And in Wyoming and Montana, it's predominantly in the eastern two-thirds of those states. Now, when it comes to identifying pine trees, we can look at the number of needles and how long the needles are. And so ponderosa pine tends to be a, a three needle pine tree with quite long needles that can be anywhere from eight to 25 centimeters in length. Now, this is a picture of a ponderosa pine site um, in Eastern Wyoming where I've been doing some work just to give you a visual impression of the kind of environment um, that we're talking about. Now, it's important to know that many other conifer or evergreen trees can cause abortive issues. Um, this can include juniper or cedar trees, um, fir trees and spruce trees, and also other pine trees like lodgepole pine. Now, lodgepole pine, as you can see in this map, occurs primarily in the western two-thirds of Wyoming and occurs at higher elevations. Um, it doesn't really distribute throughout the southwestern part of the country or in the western Great Plains, but it's more predominant in the northwestern part of the country in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and then parts of California. Now, lodgepole pine tends to be a two needle pine tree with much shorter needles, only two to six centimeters um, in length. Now here in Wyoming, ponderosa pine, as I mentioned, is common across the central and Eastern portions of the state. And this primarily causes problems in cattle, but also bison possibly as well. Now in sheep, um, problems have been noted, although they have been rare, but when they have occurred, losses have been um, significant. But this is the crux of the problem. In the late winter or early spring, cattle might seek shelter in pine trees to avoid winter storms. And subsequently, they will increase their intake of pine needles, and that causes um, some subsequent issues. Now, I have this paper here by McDonald from 1952, just to point out that we've been aware of pine needle abortion problems for many years, um, not only here in the United States, but also in parts of Canada. Now in 1993, Dr. Fister published this paper out of Montana that quantified some of the factors that influence the consumption of pine needles by cattle in the winter. And this is what they found. First of all, in the winter in Eastern Montana, cattle diets could be comprised of 40% or more of pine needles. So that's a significant portion of their diet. Secondly, pregnant cows were consuming more pine needles than open cows. And then finally, as temperatures decreased, as it got colder, the intake of pine needles increased. Now, the toxin that causes some problems is ICA, which stands for isocupressic acid. Now, this has abortifacient effects, abortive effects, because it reduces blood flow to the placenta by up to 56%. Now, this leads to a lack of oxygen to the calf um, in the uterus that um, confounds the parturition or calving mechanism. There's also this endocrine disruption of hormonal signal, signaling, which disrupts uterine vascular equilibrium. Now, importantly, this isocupressic acid and other metabolites get absorbed into the bloodstream, and this becomes detectable um, by three different types of acids. So it's really this acid that gets into the blood and ultimately gets into uh, the calf in the uterus. Now this causes what we call pine needle abortion or PNA. Now this can occur within 48 hours to two weeks after ingestion, primarily in late term pregnancy cattle. And when I say late term pregnancy, primarily late in the second trimester. Now, Short and others in 1992 did this feeding trial. And they really got dialed in on when some of these problems start to manifest relative to gestation. So when they started feeding at 116 days of gestation, there were no effects. 
However, when they started feeding at 167 days, 215, or 254 days of gestation, they got abortions. So again, that's going to be late in the second trimester and into um, that early and mid third trimester. After 255 days of gestation, the calf may survive if there was some supportive care. So colostrum, milk supplementation, oxygen therapy, IV fluids, and antibiotics are provided. Now, this is primarily an issue of those growing calves that can be aborted, but cows might develop some other lingering issues as well. This includes um, lesions that are consistent with endometriitis. They can also have increased calving intervals, so kind of delayed um, breed back, renal damage, and then um, in some cases, mature cows may die. So it can also be a problem in those adult uh, female animals. Now, in terms of dose, um, it's reported that the incidence can vary um, very widely in a group of animals, but generally cattle consuming more than two to four pounds of pine needles per day in those critical gestation periods are more likely to be affected. And as I mentioned, we know cattle in the winter, they can have diets with um, upwards of 40% pine needles. And if we consider that a cow is gonna eat 20 to 30 pounds of biomass a day, uh, they easily can exceed that two to four pounds of needles a day. Now, importantly, it's also been shown that cows with lower body condition have a tendency to eat more pine needles than cows with adequate body condition. So we have some um, animals who might um, be at higher risk, and so we might want to pay more attention to those individuals. Now, in terms of diagnosing pine needle abortion problems and then treating it, the first thing is, are those ponderosa pine trees or other conifers present on range sites during winter weather, particularly heavy snow where those cattle are seeking shelter? Now, secondly, we may have those late-term pregnancy abortions and those dead calves, uh, when we look at them, they may have been um, dead in the uterus for several days. Now, in some cases, um, particularly for those cows that ingested pine needles um, later in that third trimester, they may have those calves, they might come preterm, but those calves are gonna be small um, and weak. Now, in terms of treatment, there's really no specific treatment once this problem occurs. Now, management of calving season and then grazing distribution relative to gestation, that's really the main mitigation strategy. You've got to know about your breeding program. You've got to know about winter risk and then where you're grazing. Now, you can provide some veterinary care after the abortion, so you can try to avoid some additional problems in those cows. Uh, this can include assisting with uh, treatment for retained placentas um, and possibly uterine infection in, infections. And then, of course, the supportive care that I mentioned for those preterm calves. They're going to need extra care if they are going to survive. Okay, so I hope that was helpful to you. We're coming into that period right now with these um, spring, winter snows. So it's something to be aware of. So stay tuned to Taming Toxic Plants. We're going to have a lot more information coming and check out these resources. There's my email. And as always, if you have a poisoning issue, always consult the appropriate veterinarian or medical professional.